Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be talking about Halloween Man Hero, the newest in the Halloween Man line. This one follows up on the highly successful Halloween Man X, which is one of my favorite cheap fragrances in the universe. Halloween Man X, great coffee fragrance. It's got some other notes in there, but really it's about that coffee. Halloween Man Hero is just now, as of this video, starting to finally pop up with some regularity at discounters, but it's still kind of hard to find. It does appear like that's changing though. So here in the near future, hopefully it's not too bad. You know, hopefully you can find it pretty easy. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys the presentation, which I think is pretty slick. And I'll break down the fragrance a bit, let you know whether or not you should check it out. So let's jump into it. Let's kick things off with the presentation really quickly, and then we'll jump into the fragrance. Not literally jump into the fragrance, but we'll talk about it. Here's a good look at the box. I actually really like it. It has this kind of reflective glitch pattern to it. Very colorful, kind of reminiscent of the 80s as well, to an extent. Would that be like the early 90s? more the 80s. On the front, you have the name of the house, name of the fragrance. You've got the size on the front as well. Halloween up at the top. On the side, jump into the blue. And that's on both sides. Nothing on the back. On the bottom, bunch of information. You've got your ingredients and your batch code. Batch code here is R13450. And here is a look at the bottle. And I really dig the gradient. It looks fantastic in real life as opposed to on camera, I guess. It has yellow at the bottom, which then fades into red and then blue. So it's a little bit reminiscent of these old, um, these old like lollipops that you could get at gas stations. I think they were called atomic pops or something like that. That's what it looks like. You got the Halloween man name around the collar. Cap does click into place. And on the bottom, you have a sticker with your badge code. As always, I will waste a couple sprays for you guys. It's really good, actually. I did a first impression of this fragrance a while back, and uh, I thought it was okay at the time. Wasn't really blown away, but I thought it was nice. Let's see how things have changed. When you first spray this on, you get hit with citrus and ginger. I've talked about this 100,000 times on the channel. That is a combination that goes hand in hand, just like this. The citrus is grapefruit and lemon. It's kind of an equal mix of the two and uh, it's got this nice zinginess to it. It's very bright, very zesty. Now, some people probably are gonna say that the opening comes across a little bit synthetic, a little bit like shower gel or maybe uh, laundry detergent. And the first couple times I wore it, I would say I agree. That's kind of how I perceived it. I didn't really like it, thought it was all right, but I thought it wasn't up to par with what I've come to expect from that whole ginger citrus opening that so many blue fragrances have. But, and it's a big old but, the more that you wear the fragrance, the more the opening actually starts to smell appealing. So it does kind of a weird 180, where initially you go, oh, uh, uh, it's okay. And then the more you wear it, you think, no, it's actually pretty nice, I like that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Just one of those things where you get used to it, you know what to expect, and then you can kind of appreciate it more. And interestingly, I've had a bunch of other people smell this fragrance on me in the opening, the dry down, and I've not heard a negative word from anybody. So a lot of what you would perceive as being, oh, laundry detergent, shower gel cheap in the opening, other people don't pick it up that way. At least in my experience, they don't. As it dries down, it takes on a little bit of a sea salty vibe. So there are sea notes, aquatic notes in the mid, but in this fragrance off my skin, it comes across a little bit more of a salty type note than it does a watery type note. That melds with the ginger and the citrus from the opening. Of course, those are kind of fading out as the fragrance dries down. And by the time you hit the base, it ends up smelling like, uh, and I, I hate to put it this way, but like uh, just a kind of blue fragrance dry down. Kind of an amber woody, fuzzy, masculine dry down. Super pleasant, super pleasing. Smells like it could be a whole bunch of other fragrances. Like it doesn't have something that really sets it apart in the dry down, but it still smells good. Some people have compared this one to Bleu de Chanel from Chanel. I would say you put those side by side. Yeah, they're not that close. <laughs> and I would say quality wise, they're still not that close. That being said, you would use this and 
pretty much all the same situations that you would use Bleu de Chanel. We're talking about the Eau de Toilette version of Bleu de Chanel. So the similarity here with Bleu de Chanel is mainly gonna be they're both blue fragrances. They both have citrus, they both have ginger, and uh, they're both super versatile and lean more into the fresh side of things. Side by side though, uh, they're, they're pretty decently different. And actually, if you look, people have compared Halloween uh, Man Hero to a, a lot of different blue fragrances from Ralph Lauren to Giorgio Armani to Chanel and, and many others. It's not the same as any of them. It's not trying to clone any of them. It's not even directly necessarily inspired by a particular one of them. It just fits in alongside all of them. And as far as Invictus, I don't really pick up any Invictus in this fragrance. It doesn't have that, that bubblegummy edge like Invictus has that really never comes out on my skin at all with Halloween Man Hero. It's more so just ginger and citrus in the opening, a little shower jelly to me. Then as it dries down, that sea saltiness with a touch of lavender leading ultimately into a, a modern fuzzy amber woody base. And I will tell you guys, in case you didn't pick up on this already, I like it a lot more now than when I first tried it on. I think that opening threw me a little bit the first couple times, as I mentioned previously, I wasn't a huge fan, but now that I'm used to it, I know what to expect. I can give myself a couple blasts of it, give it a little, a little wave, and I actually like it. Now, it definitely is not on par with Bleu de Chanel or even Dior Sauvage in terms of the ingredient quality, but for the price, this stuff is very good. Assuming you don't pay too much, that is. If you pay too much, it's very not good. So with that, I guess we'll go into the price and what I think you should pay for it. I think ultimately you should pay $40 or less for this fragrance. That's because it's part of the Halloween line and basically every Halloween fragrance you can find under $40. So I don't really think that you should pay a lot more than that for this one just because it's the newest. Ingredient quality is pretty much on par with the other fragrances in the Halloween Man line. I would actually say ingredient quality here might smell a, a touch above something like Halloween Man Shot, Halloween Man uh, Rock On, or Halloween Man Tattoo. Under $40, I think you can buy it all day and feel good about it. Assuming you're looking for a blue fragrance that definitely does have compliment factor, that has a big versatility to it. And it's just uh, an easy to wear, not hyper complex scent. It's office safe, it's good for casual use, more of a daytime scent, and it's more of a spring, summer, fall fragrance. As far as performance, it is not great. About five hours is average maybe i could stretch it to six you know spray it really heavily or something but about five hours projection i would say average in the first hour or so then it sits closer to the skin by the time it works its way to the dry down not very strong at that point it sits pretty close to the skin so all that said i really like it i think it's a very solid dumb reach fragrance it's fresh as a nice fruity zesty opening the dry down is very modern it's what you would expect for most fragrances of this style and for 40 dollars or less it's gonna be solid for so many people i think that it does for warm weather what halloween man x does for cool weather which is it gives you a fragrance that's attention grabbing, that's compliment pulling, that most people are gonna think smells fantastic, that doesn't cost you very much money, and uh, just puts it all into a nice little package for you. Don't overpay for it though. Don't pay you know, $60, $70, $80, don't do that. It is not worth that price. At that point, you need to be looking at YSLY, you need to be looking at potentially Sauvage or saving up a little bit and getting Blue de Chanel if you're looking for a blue fragrance. So don't go, don't go past that point. Don't go 60, 70, 80 or above. As long as you don't do that, I think you'll be happy because you definitely know what you're getting into when you buy Halloween Man Hero. It says right on the side, jump into the blue. They're not exactly hiding it from you. So there we go, Halloween Man Hero grew on me, definitely. I think it is a solid blue fragrance and when you can consistently find this at discounters for $40 and below, I think lots of you out there are gonna be happy with it. Having just a hyper versatile blue fragrance to add into the collection that honestly smells better than what it's going to cost eventually. 
Plus the bottle slick. I mean, it, it's cool. That's cool. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for me. If you smelled Halloween Man Hero, let me know what you think about it. As always, thanks for hanging with me today. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. See you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.